Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And they had that big storm. Stan Sears. Yeah, this that is the storm. last final. Yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, the, the ZBA litigation aside, that's a sidebar. Because that was ZBA. Um, no, I see what I'm saying. Somebody asked me how much did you invest in this? Well, it, it was more than what they spent. It was $5,000. Okay, thank you. Figure she's done. Uh, yeah. Three, three, three. Double throw switch and all that. That's $3,500 for the actual generator. This is just, you, there can be discussion, but, but uh, I as I have said, it's just the gas, so you don't have to walk out with a gasoline can over a hot mess for it. And I know I really stuff. enjoyed that. It's not a rehash. <laughs> I said that 60 ways to solve it. We're just reaffirming here. We are reaffirming that support. We don't have that many outages. Because all the conditions have been set. I can send you a page down or two. I'm sorry. That's it. 15 years, maybe that many. Yeah. Thank you. 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 We are now ready to open up our meeting. It is now 6.34. Uh, roll call of members. We have Mike Ahern, Chair, John Ranlett, Vice Chair, Ray Gosney, Selectman's Representative, John Kelly. Oh, yes. We have, and Pat Roach. He's here. He's here coming. Way. <laughs> 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 Gotta go through the maze in the proper order. We do have a quorum, so any business that is uh, done tonight will um, will be effective. Sure. We're now on item number three. If any of the public would like to make any comments at this time, possibly something that's not on the agenda for tonight. Okay. Moving on, uh, administrative matters. Tonight we have an informational update and site plan compliance review for Plymouth Woods 24 unit multifamily housing project on Marie Drive and Fairgrounds Road. This project did already receive planning board approval with conditions on May 20th, 2010 and an extension of its approval time frame to 2012. Tonight's meeting will only address the existing conditions of approval and will provide an update on design particulars by the developer and his agents. Is there someone that would like to represent the developer tonight and yes. uh, state your name? Yes, my, excuse me, my name is uh, Jeff Lewis from North Point Engineering and I'm here to uh, review with you what we have done over the last 14 months or 13 months since we were here for the approval. We did submit a set of plans that it looks like you have in front of you um, that were revised in June to address uh, some of the conditions as well as some additional revisions that we had as part of the in-house uh, review and some comments that came from some of the funding agencies uh, that the owner has. Um, we have uh, applied for alteration terrain permit from DES, um, received uh, a few minor comments from them just a couple weeks ago, expect to have that permit in hand within the next couple of weeks uh, after we hopefully we're all set. Uh, with you folks, uh, we did get a sign off just this week from your town engineer, uh, Mike Vignali from KV Partners. So we think that everything is uh, falling in place uh, for the final sign off of this uh, from you folks. Uh, we hope to be, have a final plan submitted at some point in August that has everything taken care of. Um, but we do have two issues that were, uh, two items from the conditions of approval that required us to come back here uh, this evening. Uh, one of them being uh, a plan for buffers uh, around the perimeter of the site and the other one being uh, playground and equipment for, for a playground uh, on the site. So we, we have uh, take a look at both of those two, two things. I'm just going to put up a couple plans here. This is the, this is the plan that we, that we brought to you last May that we, we had uh, as part of the approval and the layout um, and basically what we were p proposing at the time. Um, as you probably recall, there's a proposed drainage swale that was going through the property. There's an outlet, new outlet for the pond that was running right down here along the common property line between the two bico lots and through the site like this and, and then going to the, to the west. Um, this is the, the new plan that we've submitted. So this is the plan revised uh, June 29th, which you have in front of you. 
And they're very similar. Um, you can see the layout hasn't changed. Um, there's been a few minor changes interior to the site that I'll, that I'll talk about after. But pretty much what we're here for is um, two things. The playground, which I'll start with. Um, we've added a playground area in the center island of the site out here. We've submitted um, some cut sheets of the two proposed playground structures that we'd like to, like to uh, use. We were required to have two separate um, structures, so we have a swing set, a small swing set, and a small uh, slide combination structure, uh, which, you, which I believe you have. And we're pl planning to put those both right in this area, in the, in the center island. We're also adding a picnic table and a couple of benches and have revised the landscaping to accommodate that and better fit in there. Um, there is the central mail station that's right in the island also. Um, we've curbed the island. It didn't have curb around it before. We've added a curb to, for better protection since there's going to be activity in there. Um, added some crosswalks and sidewalks to get, get to that uh, from the units. So that's one of the reasons we're here is so that you folks can comment on that and hopefully uh, agree with us that that seems appropriate for the development. Um, and then secondly is the buffer. The uh, applicant has had an opportunity uh, to meet with the neighbors, some of the neighbors or most of the neighbors. Um, and part of that actually happened after we submitted these plans or finished the revisions. <coughs> so I want to walk you through what the current proposal is. Um, the most significant thing is that we've taken this drainage swale and we've pulled it a little bit closer to the interior of the site. If you look carefully at the, these two plans, you'll see that it, it was a little bit further to the east, but we pulled it back so we have a little bit more natural buffer that we can maintain. So we'll be maintaining a full 50 foot, minimum 50 foot buffer, uh, natural wooded buffer along this area here. It gets a little bit close as it comes around the corner as it needs to get. It's basically the same as it was in, actually it's a little bit more than it was in the old plan. Um, and then maintaining a full 50 foot buffer the rest of the way. So that's the first, that's what we proposed when we submitted the plans um, to address the buffer concerns down here. After that time, uh, two or three weeks ago, uh, the applicant met with, the, has since met with some, some more of the neighbors and has a uh, supplemental version of this plan, which is right here. These are some of the additional things that we haven't shown on the plans yet, but what we'd like to add uh, as part of the record at tonight's meeting. <coughs> um, what, was it, what the applicant has agreed to in addition to what you see on your plan is to add a chain link fence along this portion. Actually, I can I hand this out. I have some half size copies of this plan just for the record. Look at that. So a chain link fence along this section of the, uh, basically of what will be the tree line, which is the easterly portion of the swale. And that is intended really to provide, to limit the access, the pedestrian access through that area of the site from the units into the neighbors right here at the end of uh, Allen and the neighbors at Adams. And then in talking with a couple of the um, neighbors out near Fairgrounds Road, they wanted to have some of the, these are a couple of the areas right out here near the road where there is no opportunity to maintain existing vegetation. Uh, as you recall, the, the, there's an existing single family house right here that's coming down and there's not a lot of vegetation in there. So they've agreed to uh, plant some trees, a row of some evergreen plantings right in these two areas right here. Um, we've actually already had the landscape architect take a look at, at that and have a sheet, I guess I'll pass around just so you can see what we're, we're looking at there. There you go. This just shows that same area right in the front where we're proposing some, some uh, spruce and fir plantings in these two areas. And then the only other item is right in this uh, area of the site right here, we had kept maintained a 50 foot buffer but there is an opportunity to provide a little bit more in that area and keep the existing tree line further out into the 
that area right there. So that's the other area I identified in that plan indicator that was right here. We'll actually revise the plan to, to add a little bit more buffer in there just because there's room to do that. So those are the items that were, were talked about with, with the neighbors out there that the applicant has agreed to do. So in addition to the plans we've submitted to you on June 29th, we propose to make these additional changes, adding the fence, uh, keeping a little bit more buffer, existing buffer, and adding these uh, supplemental plantings out near the road. Um, and with that, we hope to meet the, the two outstanding conditions. Um, before I stop, I'll just point out, just so you're aware, um, some of the other minor changes that have happened uh, on these, which we believe all to be really uh, incidental. As part of the uh, internal review process in coordination with architectural plans, in coordination with uh, some of the funding agencies, there's some additional requirements for uh, handicap accessibility to the units um, and handicap accessibility to trash enclosure, uh, to the, the uh, common areas. There was a requirement to add a small office uh, to, to the development. So we've incorporated a lot of those things. We've, we've added a, a small office to the corner of this building, to the end of this building, and provided a few park, additional parking spaces right there, three, three additional parking spaces which weren't on the original plan. Um, we've added some additional sidewalks just to interconnect all the common areas, the, the office with the mail station, with the playground, with the trash enclosure. And as part of adding those sidewalks, we've added some, some ramps, sidewalk ramps in there for the accessibility. Um, the original plan, the approved plan, did not have any accessible parking spaces in front of the units and were required to ha have one accessible unit in each building. Uh, so we've added an accessible parking space into each row. So there's now one additional space, parking space in each row in front of the building uh, to accommodate that. So there was a slight increase in the um, impervious area because of these additional parking spaces and then the three down near the office. Um, so as part of that, we revised all the drainage calculations. Um, those were submitted to the town engineer. That is what has been submitted to uh, alteration of terrain. Um, very minor uh, incidental increase. The drainage design still works. There was still a net reduction in all of the uh, drainers going off site. So we don't believe there to be any issue there. Um, this plan, obviously, it looks a little more detailed. We've added unit, <coughs> unit numbers to the buildings, which weren't on the plans before. Um, We've added an additional plan sheet to the set, a detailed uh, grading plan, <coughs> because all of the requirement for all the units to have uh, be ultimately uh, able to be converted into accessible units required a little bit of a tweak to the grading in the front of the buildings and needed a little bit more detail. Uh, so we've just added that sheet to the, the plan set. And um, again, all of that information has been reviewed by the town engineer already. Um, that's basically it. Just. Um, wanted to make sure we did point out how the plan has evolved. Again, it's the it's, uh, same number of units, uh, same general layout and, and everything else. Um, and I guess I'll stop there and take any questions. I have a question for you. <coughs> On the plan, it, it shows this red line which is the proposed chain link fence? Yes. Was there any reason why you didn't want to continue it in both directions, or are you continuing it in both directions? Well, I'll give a quick answer, and you can jump in any time. And this, this was the section of, <clears throat> this was the area that the, that the neighbors were concerned about that was adjacent to their site. So we had a few neighbors here, two or three, that were concerned about access directly towards their property. And this was something that the applicant agreed to just put up to deter people from going right through there. Um, one reason it wouldn't go through here is because this is, this, the, the drainage trail right here is really bisects these two properties. This is a property that, this is a single family lot that will remain with it as part of the BICO mm -hmm. subdivision. Um, and there's no concern of, that they have of adding, of putting a fence in there. So other, other than this is what was the neighbors were concerned about. Um, that's the limits of what we're proposing right now. You want to add anything to that? That wasn't. No, I think that, that addresses the specific request from the owners, from the neighbors. <coughs> Mr. Gosman. What's the height of that <coughs> fence? Six. Eight. 
Six foot fence? Yep, six foot fence. <coughs> I guess I have another question. If, if the abutters in that vicinity <coughs> had asked for the fence to continue towards the pond and continue in the other direction, um, did anybody ask for that, any of the abutters? No. You didn't ask? There is a request just this evening for a different type of fence on the back of the Blanchard property. And so they're requesting a stockade fence which matches their neighbor's fence, Mr. Philbrick's fence. And uh, so this is the first we've heard about today, but we would be prepared to go ahead and add that fence on the property line. But not towards the pond? Not towards the pond. Is there, no. just conceivably, you've got the, the playground right here. All they have to do is just walk in one direction and they're on the other side of the fence. The, the intent of the fence, I mean, it's a request from, from the abutters to uh, minimize or mitigate traffic across their property, but it wasn't intended to uh, eliminate traffic towards the pond. So if the, if the abutters would have asked for it to continue on to the pond, what would have been your reply? Well, we were, we were responding to each individual owner's request. But yeah, we would have been that owner, the ICO owner. It, 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 it's on a different piece of property. It's not, but, but where you're pointing to is not on the property. Okay, there. so you can't get from that so property to any of the abutters is what you're saying. I'm saying that this property right here is not part of the, where, where the fence would continue is not on the property that they control. Right. So unless there was a request made yes. by this property owner to extend that across their property, you couldn't do that. You'd have to cross the drainage swell and come up on our side of the property. That's, uh, shall we call it a remainder lot for Mountain View Farms for Black yeah, Bico? That's right. Yeah, it's just my, when this was, this went through several iterations as you know, and when the Plymouth Woods piece was essentially carved out on May 20th, that was separated out and that is a single family freestanding lot that's owned by, by Mr. Blackie and his brother, as far as I understand it. So, which they were, I guess you'd call it the, the parent corporation at one point. So, you know, if they had wanted the fence or something, I don't think there would have been a problem. But that's not a, it's an abutter technically, but it's part of the development hierarchy as an abutter. Yes, Mr. Renlap. So basically the changes that you proposed here were changes that the abutters or, or problems that the abutters felt existed and you were bringing this to comply with some of their requests. Is that right? Yes, yep, that's correct. Mm -hmm. Mr. Gosman. I'm following up on Mr. Randleth's um, question. Um, I'm finding the timing and the process that we're engaged here tonight um, to be very unusual. And it occurs to me that um, we're having things that are coming back to us for consideration after public hearings have already occurred. Mm -hmm. Were there not opportunities to engage the abutters prior to the May 2010 <coughs> hearing that took place here? To have these discussions take place after the planning board approval is very unusual to occur. And it doesn't present them itself for another opportunity for a public hearing process. Yeah, I, I guess I'll answer that and then you can elaborate. Um, I would agree with you. Um, the planning board, um, perhaps along with some guidance from the zoning board, put these conditions on the, on the approval and the requirement that we had was after the public hearing was closed, the planning board expected us to meet with the abutters and come develop a buffer plan and bring it back to the planning board as part of a compliance hearing. So what we're doing is what we were directed to do as part of the approval. Seems like to me the approval was probably premature then. Because we're, we're not affording opportunity for public input at this point. We're having to rely on the applicant to present information on behalf of the abutters, and that does concern me. Um, 
it's not a question of trust or mm -hmm. appropriateness in terms of your <coughs> capabilities to do that, but um, the process appears to be somewhat backwards. Um, that said, all of the things that have been presented tonight um, appear to enhance um, what has already been approved. I don't have any difficulties with uh, what's actually been shown here tonight, except one comment, that you're hearing something else again here tonight. Mm -hmm. um, at some point, a project needs to be approved and moved forward. Um, otherwise, things never get drawn to a conclusion with the necessary approval process so that the public and the applicant knows exactly what's expected. Just some general comments, food for thought. Mr. Raymond. I think, I think basically what I understood this meeting was uh, the town engineer uh, looked at the requirements on the approval and looking at the plans. And we got a letter mm -hmm. um, from the town engineer I gave, I gave it to Mike. saying that, uh, saying that there was uh, uh, let me just read it into the record. We have received the revised 15-sheet plan, uh, June 29th, the NHDES alteration of the terrain application, May 10, 2011, prepared by North Point Engineering in accordance with our agreement with the town. Based on our review, we find that the plans and documents have revised to address all of the previous comments and the project is acceptable from an engineering perspective, subject to obtaining, again, all permits previously identified. So I, I think it was my understanding that this was to reaffirm that all of the requirements placed on the approval have been met. Is, am I right or am I? Pretty much. <laughs> this this is this is a little bit of a, a, a beast of a diff horse of a different color. I have the May 2000 excuse me May 20th 2010 notice of decision here, and as Mr. Gosney said, um, there are nine conditions of approval, which after a certain point may indicate that that the actual approval was premature. But it's a done deal at this point. Um, the ones that are most uh, salient after the general blessing, if you will, by the town's engineer on the engineering issues are, um, this is item eight, condition of approval. A detailed buffer fence plan shall be presented at a compliance hearing, which is this, before the planning board for approval at the time of site plan review. Well, I think the language is a little convoluted. It, it should say, site plan reaffirmation, whatever. But it says the applicant shall meet with the abutters to discuss the detailed plan prior to the plan being submitted to the planning board. And then uh, the last and also most important um, issue of condition that, that we're addressing tonight or is being addressed tonight is uh, number nine, which says the issue of storm drainage shall be addressed in an approved drainage plan by the contracted town engineer. We haven't gotten to that point yet. In, in our conversation has been addressed. So mm -hmm. I, I think what we're looking at here is perhaps some verbiage that should have been a little more clear in terms of protocol and procedure, but this is essentially a compliance hearing for the conditions um, of approval and any updates that have occurred in um, achieving or attaining those conditions of approval. Any more comments from the board? And I know we probably should have got given a little bit more history of, um, of this, but I think Sharon's hit it now. Um, thank you, and I should probably ask you to speak That's up okay. sooner. If there's no more comments from the board, I, I would like to entertain a chance for the public to be able to speak on this before we have any further talk. So moved. I would suggest that the motion uh, state that uh, we reopen the public hearing from the May 2010 for public comment on proposed improvements to the project. Is there a second? A second. Okay. All those in favor of reopening the hearing tonight? 
signify by saying aye? Aye. 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 Could I j just, I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. All those opposed? Okay. Just a point of clarification where uh, the public hearing is on the conditions and any discussion relevant to it. We, we we're not going back to the beginning. No, we're just the, the nine. Approval is in no place. No, nine that's fine. Points yeah. that okay. I was trying to limit it yep. in scope. Yep. Mr. Kelly. Is it, is a public uh, meeting uh, legal by not m putting out a notice? We, the abettors the were noticed. So this, this can be. But I mean, it, the, is, is a public meeting just for abutters usually, or is a, a meeting is informational. A hearing has to have certified notice to the abutters and and all the protocols, newspaper, public posts, <coughs> which, which I did. So, so this is a hearing. Like I said, it's a little bit of a hybrid, but it, we have the capacity to have a public hearing to take input from the public and the abutters as the discussion applies to the nine conditions. Right. That but we can't rehash right. the merit of the approval. Right. Okay. So, yeah. Mr. Chairman, reflecting on Mr. Kelly's question, um, I'd like to amend or restate the motion I made that um, we open our meeting for public input on the proposed improvements to the project tonight so that it does not reference anything in the way of a public hearing or a continuation of the previous public meeting. Yeah. I think that would put us in a better yeah. position. Yeah. I'll second that. Okay. Do we have to re-vote or are we all set? Why don't you, would, since we've got a new proposal. Why don't I we? would, you want to make this real clean because it's, it's All those <laughs> that are in favor of changing the wording for opening this up for public input rather than a public hearing. Rather than a public hearing, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. So, the time now is 7 o'clock, and I now open this up for public input. So, anyone that would like to speak in favor of the applicant in relation to the nine issues? Uh, could speak in favor. Ernie Filburn, 9 Allen Avenue. You sure? Come on up. Could I use your charts? Yeah. Well, this is uh, something we uh, propose to the uh, builders for buffers for their high red willow trees to block the view. Something that they agreed upon. This area here, which they showed, they expanded this, the undisturbed buffer here. They're not going to touch anything here. This they agreed upon cutting it back on here, all undisturbed in here. That's why I put that on record so everybody knows. That's what they agreed upon, I'm sure Jeff Brown can. That's this area right there. Oh, right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. as, far as, I, as far as I can go back, mm -hmm. find the storage, uh, snow storage. Okay. They're going to leave undisturbed on the west side of my property. And leave all this undisturbed. And whatever, come October, they're supposed to start. Whatever spots they can find, where it's maybe blank spots, the wind to plant the trees along here, the high red willows, so they, they push out a little big. I don't care about fencing, because I pretty much scare kids off my property. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that's pretty much about it for me, for my wife. Somebody else got a thing to do with it? We can talk to them. We've been agreed with them, they came over my house and we discussed it and we're in agreement. All right. Thank you, Mr. Philbrook. Is there anyone else that would like to speak in favor of the applicant and the, and the proposal? Yes, state your name. Greg Patton, Page Street. Um, when we were discussing the fence, um, we had suggested, as we've heard from numerous people around town, um, the pond is an attractive nuisance. Um, a lot of people have expressed concern with kids not necessarily being attended to quite like they should, um, and have kids end up floating face down in this pond. 
what we, what my wife and I had recommended, is continue the fence to the edge of the pond, across the pond, and up the back side, you know, as a barrier to keep the kids away from, you know, a hazardous condition. Um, we had also talked about an eight-foot fence, not a six-foot, but uh, you know, just something that people can't climb over readily. But to have start proposing by Bill Burks to now pass our properties across the pond and up the back side. And on the path, uh, 25 page street, just to add to what he just said, Jeff had said at the neighborhood meeting on Thursday night that it may be a requirement for the funder that they continue that fence. To, towards the pond or in the other direction? Toward the pond. Towards, just towards the pond. And to block the pond off of the square in the back side of that property. Would you like to come up and kind of trace? We have a wire here. This is our property. The recommendation or suggestion was to continue following down here across. This is the pond across here and then back up through to kind of, you know, make this a U-shape, you know, as a deterrent because it's a pond. It has frogs, kids, and water, and ponds. Uh, this is also the deep end, you know, when it's full like it is now, um, it's probably 25, 30 feet deep. So, and that's not just our concern, that's, that's other people that are familiar with this whole area that have been concerned with children and that pond. So. Thank you. And um, again, just to add to what he was talking about the fence, we'd also like a condition of the approval of said fence discussed uh, to be maintained by the owner of the fence as part of the condition of approval of their permit. And we'd like to have the fence maintain a good working water. And that if it goes into district here, we can force the what the towns go to force it in the Is there anyone else that would like to speak in favor of the project? Okay. Yes. yes. Jeff already touched upon it. My name is Steve Blanchard, uh, 7 Allen Ave. Um, I spoke with Jeff briefly this evening, and uh, just we agreed upon a stucky fence along my 80 foot piece of property. Uh, where am I right here? Yeah. Jeff agreed to that, so I just want to point that out for, for the record. Okay. Is there anybody that would like to speak in opposition to the applicant? Yes, I'm state Jane your name. Nelson, Fairgrounds Road, and I did have a question about the drainage issue. The town has since changed um, the runoff from the pond from Page Street to go through their property, which eventually goes into my backyard. Could you come up and point that out for us on the map, please? I live right up here, and all the drainage is coming into my backyard. And I didn't give anybody permission to use that. Mr. Chair, we haven't had the drainage discussion yet, so I mean, we're taking these comments in and under consideration, but I, I would think that uh, Mr. Lewis could speak because there have been a lot of significant changes in, in the direction of this and that, and perhaps we get some more information after uh, a more thorough discussion of, of the mitigation on drainage. Yeah, maybe we were, we could have waited and gotten more information from the applicant, then had the input. Right, but. We're stumbling along, so we'll be okay. Um, is there anything else uh, in opposition to the application? Anything of a yes? Doug County on 25th Street. And as I mentioned tonight, the, the planning board expected them to meet with the abutters um, as part of the condition. I just wanted to make it on record that <coughs> they came knocking at the door with a piece of paper saying this is what we're going to do. And, um, and they finally 
know. And uh, it wasn't until Phil Brooks decided to have a meeting at their house, and then should we invite Jeff Brown to that meeting? It wasn't until they made the initiative to invite the applicant to the meeting that the requirement was met. Anything of a general nature? Yeah, uh, two things. One, I think there's a state law indicating that uh, the Board of Selectmen and or the Planning Board have an obligation or responsibility for requiring defenses of ponds, bodies of water. Um, I can't tell you the book page, paragraph, chapter, but it's in there. Uh, another thing, I sent on this drainage issue in the general nature, since I'm not, I don't live there, but listening to the general concerns uh, with others, and, and most of them aren't technically involved in engineering stuff. Uh, if through whatever design criteria the engineers for the project, uh, and the town engineer who represents the town in reviewing the specifications, uh, to indicate that there's not going to flow any more water off of that site than is presently flowing. There needs to be um, uh, an effort made on the part of the developer to uh, present that element to a better, to general people who uh, can put their minds around it uh, than just a a uh, statement saying oh, there's no water going to be there. Because obviously, people who are on the downhill side uh, may not be an engineer, but they have common sense. And if they've had an issue of water issues in that area. And obviously, through the process of human intervention of reshaping the properties <coughs> over time to do different things, and people have had to put up with the results. They're very concerned that the same situation is going to happen. Good people, well intentioned. We've got the proper engineers, we have our town engineer. But uh, I'm sure when someone just says, oh, don't worry about it, it's all better, it's, it's not going to happen. Uh, people, are, especially in this group in that neighborhood, have a lot of trouble with water. Uh, there needs to be and there's some assurance through uh, the permitting process to indicate that if water is flowed onto properties over what is so, so called calculated to flow there, that the planning board, zoning, or the code enforcer, the town had recourse to the law to require them to mitigate that issue on that person's property so that it doesn't happen to that person's property. They can do it through heat, through rehydration methods, whatever method they like. But there needs to be some kind of um, thought process to really, really evaluate this, especially in this area, which has had a lot of trouble with hydrology. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Miller. Any other comments? And I just wanted to also mention, maybe like, through my notes here. We did express concern about safety at prior meetings when this was first taking place. That topic did come up tonight. And um, on the map showing where the burn is going to go, um, what that is at the end of Cage Street, there's a town right of way. And uh, when they remove the snow, they push it down towards the current burn at the end of the pond. But they also push the snow towards the woods. You know, so the snow bank gets pretty high there. Is that going to affect snow removal, snow storage? And that's one of my questions. And I thought in a prior meeting, it was discussed that the room was going to be like four by four on their side. But in the meeting at Tilbert's house, he mentioned that it was going to be in a V shape and grass. And so I was a little bit confused about that. And. Um, I know one of the things that came up in the um, meeting the other night was the question about terminal surface driveway, and they hadn't really thought about that. So those are just a couple of thoughts through the terminal here. All right, if there's no further comments.
give you a few seconds, Mrs. Patton. Yes, All right, Mr. Cool. I'm just curious if, for some reason, the projected water flow exceeds their 50 year limit, it floods all the people's property out. Who's going to be held responsible for that? The town for approving the project? Or for them and their bad calculations? Well, standard, well, Jeff can address this better, but I mean, the 100 year and 500 year and all that stuff, that's an aberration. That's when you get FEMA in. That's not a, a, a standard, normal, anticipated, I mean, in, in the realm of normalcy um, engineering calculations. So in, in that case, it would be a disaster, and, um, and it would probably be a disaster anyway with that magnitude um, because of all the water you've got sluicing down the hill and everything. Um, Right, but I mean that's a natural occurrence. You are you are where you are. When oh, well, okay. First of all, I'm going to let Jeff address this. Uh, we can't. We need to keep the discussion in a straight line for these reasons. So we should really have a drainage discussion when we have a drainage discussion. We've gotten halfway into fencing and stuff. And we're kind of all over the place on that. I need some clarification. So maybe Mr. Philbrook's um, question could be addressed when Mr. Lewis presents the drainage plan, because he's got schematics and stuff. And then I can answer your question better. I, I just I don't want to get theoretical here, because then we get off in space. And so I've got a suggestion. We're at some point, we'll, at this point, we'll stop talking about the drainage. We'll suspend the input, public input. <coughs> we'll have Jeff come up talk about drainage well, and then may, may I make yeah. a suggestion that we do, that we finish up the buffer discussion yep. first okay and then exactly. then we'll know what's where and then drainage kind of interfaces I'm with really buffer. Concerned about drainage so much. I'm okay I'm just throw that out there All right. <laughs> to do it. <laughs> see if I bite <laughs> so we can continue to talk about the other eight items which has been mainly about the buffer so another comment about the buffer I was not able to make it to the meeting, so they really have no idea what I want from that. All right. At this point, um, I think it might make sense to suspend the public input, and we will come back to public input after we've gotten s some feedback from the applicant on drainage. It's Mr. Uh, no, buff buffers. Perhaps may I make a suggestion? Who was Jeff? You were at the meeting. Could you please just discuss the buffer issue? I know that Chris has made some efforts, and I've seen. Some, if you want to just go to the podium, just tell us what happened, because um, it sounds like we've got natural buffering, we've got enhanced landscape buffering with trees, we have chain link, chain link fence, and then kind of intermittently we have stockade fence. So could you just start from the beginning sure. and? Tell us what happened. Yeah, I mean, uh, your comment about the way that the, this is all ordered has been somewhat problematic, obviously. Um, we received our approval conditioned upon a uh, detailed buffer plan. Uh, detailing that def buffer plan has been difficult um, because what we try to do is um, contact each owner and get a sense of what they would like to see, get a sense of what um, individually. individually what their concerns are and uh, Chris Boyle uh, went out over a period of several weeks and met tried to meet with uh, virtually every owner um, some owners were more accessible than others um, and uh, we were somewhat uh, discouraged by the process until Mrs. Philbrick called a week or so ago two weeks ago and suggested that we get together as a group and discuss it as, as many neighbors as are involved can be there. And we did that last Thursday, we could go tonight. And it was a very productive meeting. Um, we, we resolved a lot of uh, concerns and came up with a plan that I think addresses most everyone's concerns. So you were having process issues process at the outset. Issues, right. <laughs> so that, the, that's really the, the problem. And we understand that everybody sort of comes at it from a different perspective. So what we're trying to be as responsive as we possibly can and be as reasonable as we can um, in the process and, and what, we, what we offer. Uh, our initial 
uh, offer was, if you want a fence, we'll put a fence in. Well, most people really don't want a fence. If you want landscaping, we'll do landscaping. Well, it's hard to tell how much landscaping you need until the site actually gets opened up and you see what it really looks like. Nobody can really visualize what it's going to look like until it's underway. Um, so what we t discussed with the, the owners is that we would look at this as sort of an ongoing process to try to resolve everybody's concerns as we move forward. And if there are gaps and holes and places that people would like to have us fill with landscaping, we would be prepared to do that. You're, uh, there will be, and I'm, I'm jumping in just to assure uh, the public and the abutters, once this development gets going, I mean, there, there will be all kinds of protocols, so drainage easements, maintenance agreements on this, landscaping, maintenance agreements. I mean, there, there are uh, insurances in place, in the place, which comes under the heading of the development agreement to assure this, this goes along properly because you can't do it all at the beginning because you haven't done it yet. Right. You have to have time to let things settle out. So. And, and, and so going along with that, Re with recognizing that there are probably going to be circumstances that we're going to have to shift around a little bit because one thing that was decided might not be what what people would like to see. Um, we did we did agree that we would do a um, a chain link fence in this area here to um, satisfy a couple of owners in terms of um, you know uh, limiting access to the property from residents that are here. Um, uh, I did. I did suggest that maybe we could extend this chain link fence, but uh, Jeff Lewis reminds me that we cannot. We cannot put a fence across Mr. Bike, Mr. Blackie's land, in this location. We don't own this land. We don't control this land, and we can't run it up this way because we're going to cross the drainage swale, and you're going to catch material possibly, or you just can't. You just can't fence it. So, we could fence along the pond. But it doesn't really create any sort of deterrent or, or uh, safety uh, net, if you will, from residents here going to the pond. And I think this was discussed both in the ZBA meetings and here at the planning board meetings. And the practicalities, you know, were were, were discussed at the time, but it was not a condition of the approval. So really, what we're talking about is the buffer and the what, and, and maybe my interpretation of a buffer is a little bit different than other folks. My interpretation of a buffer is is mostly a visual screen um, uh, and to a certain extent pedestrian and traffic screening. Um, but can we mitigate noise? Can we mitigate light? You know, to a certain extent, yes, we can, but not not everything. So I think what we try to do is approach it at a, as a, at a reasonable and responsive manner uh, to those, uh, those individual uh, needs. Could you just point out who's got what? I know Mr. Blanchard, I believe, won a stockade fence. Is that correct? Yeah, and, and so when we were at the meeting last week, we said, what would you like? And, and, and I think maybe Mr. Blanchard was thinking, in retrospect, OK, given the discussions, he said, I, w I guess I really would like a fence. So we said, fine. So he is right here. And I think the Philbricks have a stockade fence. You have a stockade yeah, fence in part of it? Yeah, his property is from uh, east to west. Oh, OK, so here, you have a stockade fence yeah. here. Okay. So he would like to match a stockade mm -hmm. fence here. We're, we're fine. That's fine okay. with us. Uh, so I, I was just, no, I was just wondering about the yeah. in incidence of, of fencing. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of small. It's, it's kind of small. And, and of course, this fence here, this, the, the chain link fence that's here, will be on our property. We will maintain it. It, it will mm -hmm. be our fence that we own it. Um, and, and visually, you should be able to see right through it so it won't look like uh, a, a solid barrier. Would you say that um, you have agreements with all the abutters so far? I think Mrs. Nelson. Mrs. Nelson? Probably except yeah. the Nelsons. Okay, so that's on your radar. Right. Okay. And in, and in their case, we weren't able to chat with them in, in, in any detail. And uh, we're responding to Mr. Gignac. Gignac? Is it Gignac. Gignac here? And he asked us to detail uh, some plantings, which I think Jeff passed you here. And the, the conditions are kind of similar, so we've put that in the plan as well, that we would put uh, a, a thick so barrier of, of trees. Mrs. Nelson is just beyond where your fingers are, yes. right there at the top. So there are some plantings there yeah. to begin with, and then any additional whatever. Yeah. And okay. we, we would certainly discuss fencing there as well. So it's not, you know, we're, we're not shutting the door on that. 
Well, thank you. I've, I've got a much clearer picture now. So part of the process, unfortunately, it's sort of a dynamic process. We rich just really couldn't be as definitive as we'd like to be, but we are going to respond in a reasonable manner and uh, a timely manner for, for all of this. I suppose at this time, if we could now move on to drainage. I'm good, yes, thank you. And we do have, um, I, I know <coughs> some of the, just by way of, of history, some of the um, abutters have come to the town hall and, and gotten some of these sheets. I mean, and that's perfectly fine, but we were getting to the point where we're having the discussion before the discussion. But um, Mr. Lewis, Jeff Lewis, the engineer, can probably illustrate uh, the drainage changes and the water course changes on the before and afters in, in the updated drainage plan. You're up. Did, um, Mr. Inlet. I have a question. Is, due to all this construction, is the depth of the pond going to change in any way? From this pond back here? Mm -hmm. No. So it's still, when they were saying, well, I think it was 25 feet deep in some. I don't know if it. Uh, I don't what know what was the depth point. somebody gave? 25 feet. That's full, and that's the bank full. It's, it's probably 20 feet. 20 feet. Probably. But, but that's been that way in the past, too, right? Yes, yeah, since okay. this is created. All right, I just wanted to make sure that we weren't adding any depth or anything. I want to clarify in my mind that we're not adding any more water to the pond. Well, actually, they are raising the bird, so they're raising the depth of the pond. Let's, well, we'll let him Let's have this explain. Discussion. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. All right, I'm not sure where to begin. I honestly didn't come here to um, talk about the whole drainage design, but um, I Just guess I'll start by start where we left off when the plan was approved. Um, we had two conditions on the approval, but one of them being the last one that said that the, the issue of the storm drainage shall be addressed in an approved drainage plan by the contracted town engineer. The second one is relative to state permits. We're required to have an alteration terrain permit. Alteration terrain is looking pretty much specifically at the drainage. Um, when we were here a year ago and got the conditional approval, we had not yet submitted our DES application to alteration terrain. We wanted to make sure that we were on the right track with the town and the town engineer uh, before we did that. Um, at that time, there is a review letter from Mike McNally back in, I believe, May of 2010. And he had a page of comments relative to the drainage, but we had already been through a review. We had revised the plan a couple of times. Um, we had had a lot of discussion about the pond and the existing problems that are out there with the pond and the fact that the, exist the, the pond right now has no overflow. Um, it just fills up and when it gets to capacity, it flows down Page Street and causes all pro kinds of problems with people on Page Street. Um, it does flow through our property right now existing comes right through here and goes on to the Nelson's property and that is as of today as of two years ago when we started this that is the natural drainage that is the existing drainage pattern uh, of our site now this piece of property doesn't drain it's downstream from the pond it doesn't with the exception of maybe a little strip of woods right here the whole thing drains the other way towards fairgrounds road um, so we don't have any water from this site going into the pond at all. None of the proposed improvements on here are draining into the pond. It's all being captured on site, treated, infiltrated into the ground. It's designed for everything we see on here to get into a detention basin right there that will infiltrate. Um, so we're recharging that water into the ground. There's virtually no runoff from the site leaving the site. So as far as the standalone site concern is concerned, we're going above and beyond what we're required to do on the town level and on the state level and, and treating and infiltrating everything. The problem is the pond, which is an existing situation out there um, that happens to go through, you know, after it snakes its way down Page Street, comes through here. So there was a lot of discussion about that as part of the public hearing process uh, with you folks in the planning board. We met with the town engineer. We came up with what we thought was a reasonable uh, uh, mitigation, if you will, something to help this existing problem that 
uh, really isn't created by this property at all, but um, something that we can offer to, to help at least the people upstream on Page Street. So the idea was that we would would build a berm right at the end of Page Street. We have an off-site drainage plan, um, drainage improvement plan that shows it. And it is just about a two foot high berm just to provide, to prevent that water in the pond from overflowing down Page Street and causing all the problems to the people on Page Street. That berm combined with cutting a new swale right into the bank of the pond right here and ru running it through the property so that the water right now goes from point A at the end of Page Street to point B out here on the Nelson's property. And all we're doing is giving a different route that gets there to get there from A to B without going down Page Street. Jeff, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to put you on the spot, but um, what I was referring to, and I can bring it up if you like, is essentially the pre-development and post-development trajectories mm -hmm. of the water. Yep. So I'll just pass this out to I the mean, board. Those, were, those, are, right. those, are, those are no different than right. what was presented at the public hearing. No, but I mean, just, is just yep. so people can see, and, and I just didn't know if the abutters had had a chance. Well, all, all, of this, all of this was part of the, part of the original process, so. But had um, anyone seen, excuse well, me? Yeah, we had a lot of discussion. We had um, full-size plans of those that were presented at the planning board meetings. Where the water comes from? Yeah, right down page. Um, right. That's so that's all part of the part of the stuff that was reviewed by. So we're gonna take it away from Page Street. Shoot it over where it was going. But I didn't know if they were. I mean, it's been a. It is what it is. It, it, well, it's been. I mean, this is we we we. I, I don't think I can exaggerate. We beat this to death as part of the planning process, as far as I'm concerned. Um, and, the, and the planning board, I think, was comfortable enough with it at the time that they said, look, get the final sign off from the town engineer on that, because mm -hmm. we were very close to it at the time, mm -hmm. and that will satisfy the condition. So we have that now. And you have the sign off. We, we've gone the, the last little step. He had some concerns that were in his memo. One of them was we wanted a drainage easement on the, around the swale, so we've added that to the plan. Um, now, any questions from the board at this point? Yes, Mr. Ray. You've met with the town engineer on all of this? We met with the town, yes. I mean, we met this original design yeah, that's exactly. basically remained unchanged. We met with the town engineer a year and a half ago right. um, and reviewed everything and, and, uh, with this and had a, I mean, he's, and, and we met with him more recently right, uh, in May, I think, of this year. Right, and then we've got a year. Yeah. June update to your calculations and everything. Yeah. Now, we did recently update the calculations because, as I mentioned before, we had a little bit of ch changes on site, which don't really affect the pond at all. Mm -hmm. And we did move this swale up about 20 feet further under the site to provide a buffer here. But that, that didn't have any effect on right. you know, the, the hydraulics of it. But we ran the calculations again and submitted them because we want the final report to match the final plan. Okay. One more question. So basically what you're telling us is that the um, construction and the buildings are not going to add anything or anything significant to the flow that would normally go down Page Street, come across and go into the Nelson's property. That's right, mm -hmm. yeah. The development will have no effect on that. It's hard to, um, you know, I'll be honest, it's hard to quantify exactly. the flow that comes out of that pond. It is a, and I, I don't want, I mean, we heard, we heard a lot of testimony back as part of the uh, original planning process about that, about that pond and how it got there and how high it gets. I've been out there when there's, it's hard to tell, I mean, it looks like a couple feet of water. You can see bicycles or something in the bottom of it. I've been out there when it's almost bank full. So it is 15, 20, maybe more when it's full up at the top of the bank. So if that happens, that pond's sitting there full of water, and then there's a big storm, and the water comes barreling down the hill into that thing, it's just basically, now I haven't seen it when, that, when it happens, but it, I I mean it, it goes down Page Street. It just rips down Page Street. I mean, it, the, all the evidence in the world that that's what it does. And it just <laughs> comes flying through here and goes into the Nelson's property. That's what happens today. Mm -hmm. um, and the only opportunity we have, being where we are, between the Nelson's property and between Page Street is to try to help the folks who live on Page Street. If you look at the 
well, the calculations by adding the additional foot of storage volume with that berm and by having a controlled point here where the water goes out rather than just spilling down all Page Street, it should reduce the, the water that comes into the Nelsons, but it but all depends on how much water is going into that. So <coughs> what we can say for sure is that it's not going to increase the water that's going into the Nelsons, but there's certainly still going to be a swale and water coming into their yard because that's where what happens so today. So is it fair to say to, to um, reward this that this is kind of a bonus? A, first of all, the development's not going to increase any of the naturally occurring runoff, but a problem that was pre-existing on Page Street with the natural runoff is being eradicated and put somewhere else. I would, I would say that that's the case, you yeah. know. Um, Sharon, we probably had, I don't know how many hundred year storms just in the past 10 years. Must have had at least a couple, I'm guessing, minimum. But um, when Vico did the subdivision mm -hmm. years ago, was the drainage intended to go on the Nelson property back then, or was it supposed what? to change? Oh, I don't know. The Brico subdivision, I wasn't, I haven't looked at that. I wasn't part of that. I mean, it, it, there yeah. again, I mean, you have to get your permits from DES and, and everybody else, your stormwater permits from the feds. So there had to be, there would have had to be and should be some mitigation on that. I mean, I, 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 you know, these these guys are first in line. So, the the Bico thing, I don't know, but I mean, it would have to be analyzed. Excuse me for interrupting, but you know, if if that was had some cumulative effect, Bico after this is built, then it's first come first serve. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we can't be too theoretical on that because it hasn't occurred, and it would have to be looked at on its own merits. Mr. Inlet and then Mr. Kelly. Sharon, um, item number nine, the issue of the storm drainage shall be addressed in an approved drainage plan by the contracted town engineer. Now, Mike has met yes, with them. Yes, signed off on and it. Signed yeah. off on it according to this yep. letter, right? Right. Okay. I mean, it is what it is, but it is. And I'm not trying to belabor this, just trying to get some information out of there that there is going to be a benefit regarding naturally presently occurring drainage issues because they're going to step up to the plate and build some farms. Okay. Mr. Kelly. Uh, the only concern I have is the additional um, human beings that are going to be around that and if this is low income housing. No, it's not. It's, it's, not. it's retirement. It's workforce. Workforce, whatever. So there will be more children it's around there, right? Right. Okay, the Could second thing is that all of this has been gone over by the town engineer. We've approved it, and I have that awful, awful feeling that we're going down the same road as what the town did with Lowe's. Every time somebody answers a question, there's one more question, and it goes on and on and on, and that increases the cost of the uh, development. Uh, with no major effect on uh, what they're going to do. So if we're going to rely on town engineers, we're going to rely on our own knowledge and our expertise as far as the planning board, which we might have made a mistake. I'm not too awfully sure about approving this first. I really don't see we could go on this for months on end uh, trying to figure out the ultimate decision that, 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 that would be made after a long, long time, if ever. And I just think that, that if, if everybody of all the experts agreed, uh, then somewhere along the way, we are going to have to say, okay, uh, good or bad, this thing should go through. Mr. Hosny. Um, Mr. Chairman, as I reflect back several years to the original BICO proposals. Um, I was hoping you would. <laughs> I um, do not recall, and I do recall um, actually walking all of this several times uh, several years ago, including um, down, up and down Page Lane. Um, I do not recall any significant issues coming forth in regards to the pond. Um, I share the same view as 
Mr. Kelly around the concern about we're getting an increased population that um, is going to have access to this pond. But that issue and the one of drainage, um, I don't recall any significant issues actually arising when that project was in front of the planning board several years ago. What I do find um, troubling is the idea we're thinking about even discussing compelling an applicant to actually have to take steps off-site on property that they do not own, do not have control on. Um, I, for one, do not believe that that's something that's within the, I'll use the word purview, that we should be exercising. Certainly, I think we ought to address that concern in another forum, perhaps, because of the concerns that everybody else has expressed here around the potential access to that. But I don't believe that should directly involve this applicant. If the planning board wants to, through the town planner, um, address that matter by approaching the other property owner and discussing that in terms of something that might be done on a volunteer basis or a partnership basis, but to not make that part of the approval process that this applicant's being submitted to. The uh, other comment that I have is that um, I am very familiar with all of the work that our town engineer has done on behalf of us, um, I say us, the town, over the number of years, and the due diligence that the town engineer goes through to make sure that no harm is done by any project to the citizens that are either adjacent to or immediately in the vicinity of a particular project. I, for one, take a great deal of comfort in knowing that our town engineer has signed off on this drainage plan and that there is no significant harm that's being increased here as a result of this project moving forward. Um, if indeed, if there's probably significant, excuse me, there's probably incidental improvements that are occurring here as a result of work that the applicant is going to be doing to try to improve in order to garner, if you will, the support of the town and the citizens. So I don't think that this project is creating any additional issues that we should be concerned about. And I, for one, believe that the applicant has gone uh, and done a good job of following through. I know that perhaps some would believe it's not perfect, but it's done a good job of moving forward, and I'm sensing that that process is going to continue even after tonight in the interaction with the two parties here that have concerns that haven't been finalized. And um, if I could tag on to one last comment of Mr. Kelly, um, this type of subject can take and drag on for a long period of time. And at some point, um, we have to draw a complete conclusion on this. If there's no more comments from the board, we will reopen the public input uh, concerning the, dr um, the drainage at this point. And then we will bring it back to the board for more discussion. Yes, state your name. I would just like to give a little background here on this swale that they say is in my backyard. When we bought the property for 20 years, it was dry. Not a drop of water in there. FICO did their construction, and we had a flood. Not a flood. We had maybe this much water in that swale. And you're telling me all that water is not going in my swale and making a difference? It is. How can it not? Yes. Yes. When Vico was before the board doing that project, I think it was around 2005, I was at, I don't know if it was on that planning board meeting, it was one of these meetings, and I'm not a very outspoken person, <laughs> and I really had all I could do to say, we have a drainage problem on the street that needs to be addressed. And I had all I could do to say that, and Fulton was the engineer at that time, he gave me a business card and said, we want to talk to you, and I said, it would be better if you talk with Greg, you know, and gave him the phone number, Fluid never contacted us. We tried to contact Fluid, but there was no conversation between us. So I just wanted to make mention that we did bring it up at a Vico meeting. Then, um, but we had to have conversations with Mr. Blackie on the street, and Mr. Blackie spoke with Greg and I, um, Richard and Tammy Kudu, and Dick and Sally Kudu. And he would say, you know, I'm not saying I want to fix this problem months from now or six months from now or, you know, he never gave us a definite time frame, you know, but, you know, he said down the road it would be addressed. Well, it never got addressed. And, um, if I might interrupt, the original plan for it was going to be 
opportunity to keep that pond from getting as full as it does. He was going to have that start draining out two feet, four feet from bank full. Um, if they go ahead with this proposed engineering idea to increase the water level by a foot, we're going to have water flowing into our basement at a much greater rate than we already have. Um, if, if the plan, like plan Dale Black was originally going to do, was to keep the level from overflowing or becoming bank full, then that would alleviate the problem. <coughs> I do also remember that part of the conditions of his putting in this drainage system was it was highly recommended by the town engineer to get proper permissions and easements from everybody downstream. And I know for a fact that was never done. So, but that's yes, another project. A problem. Yes, it has been beat on before, and it was never addressed. It was just, it was a good idea, you really ought to, and it never got done. And he would always tell us, you know, it comes down the street and goes off into daylight. For years, we never knew where that water went. It wasn't until this property came to light that, well, I had water on my property, I had water on my property, and everybody found out where the water was coming from. That's why things were not brought up before, because nobody knew. It wasn't until this all came about that people started realizing where the water was coming from. <coughs> comments. Yes. I'd love to do the flooding. As well as Jeff Brown. No. This is a chain link fence you got here. Near my property. You don't need it near my property at all. I think I already told you that. So all the I'm looking for is trees and natural buffer. Because it goes you don't have to go up that far with it if you don't want to. It's up to you. Flooding issue you're not getting into. All right, so let's, if there's no more comments, yes, another comment. I just want to make a point. I just want to hammer home a simple concept here. There is an, I think everyone in this room, including the engineering team, will agree there is an amount of water that currently floods into the foot of Page Street Mike. that its destiny is to percolate into the ground. It is not following a water course through the Nelsons and down to my property. Like Sir, Chris, you are? Chris, Chris Woods, 157 okay. Kirk. So, given that, we have an amount of water here, and you know it's, it's infiltrating into the ground. So what, what are we doing? They're redirecting that, putting it into the pond. Yes, I, I buy off on the concept, the engineering concept, that there's a weir there. It is regulating flow, accepted. However, there is a volume of water which is coming down out of that pond and going downstream. And I mean, I think the well, the question is, is under some circumstances, given that there's no longer infiltration at the foot of Page Street, the water's being retained, big storm, it's in the pond, the pond can only handle so much in the way of infiltrating, it's coming out of that weir. So is the quantity of that water ever going to be greater than if they did nothing off-site, did no berm, no addressing Page Street? I think this is really a critical issue. I mean, I, I, mean, I take your point very clearly that off-site conditions is a point of order in the decision to go ahead with this project. 
they're probably irrelevant. But given that the applicant is accepting this, they're doing this voluntarily, how can we disregard the offsite conditions? It seems like it's woven right into this. Either it is or it's not. There's, don't do anything on Page Street or include it, and then it's part of the deal. Am I making sense? Is this, I mean, it's the quantity of water. Everybody admits it's in kind of the kernel of state law. You can't do development. I understand the site development, the on-site conditions are not adding to any water that comes down to my property, to the Nelson's property. But this change to the foot of Page Street is changing where the water is going, how it's being handled, and ultimately may impact me in the form of more water. Is that fair? Is it fair? I think, no, I, I, I'm very happy for the people on Page Street if they get their problem solved. That's great. They deserve it. Um, I want to be treated fairly, too. I'm, I'm willing to accept some water comes down. It's going to happen uh, under some conditions, but I don't want more than what currently does. Not fair. I've got to be thinking about where am I going to put the addition to my barn? I've got to place it so that it doesn't get washed out every day. I have to bring in fill. That's a cost to me. I don't think that's entirely fair. So I ask you, it's the quantity of water here. Balancing the equation. Yes, we've had an engineering study exhaustively, but the assumption is the water coming out of that pond, down Main Street, all is going down through Page Street and down the swale. And I think there's an infiltration amount there that's not being considered, or it's not being balanced down the infiltration. So I'm going to leave it at that, no more. I rest my case. Any other comments? Yes. One last comment. I was told last year, when I asked the question, um, so what happens when more water comes in my swale? I was told it's a civil matter, so I can sue. That's what I was told. I'm here in Vega. Any further comments? Mm -hmm. Yes. Susan I just wonder why everybody's concerned about that. I'm sorry, could you? Susan Butter? Could you stand, please? Thank you. It's hard for us sometimes to hear you when you don't stand. Everybody was worried about where the water's going. Is there any way that they can put it into the town sewer? Oh no. I don't have an answer for that. Don't know that. <coughs> no. All right, so I'm going to bring, if there's no more further comments, I'm going to bring it back to the board and uh, so we're going to end the public input at uh, 7.50. And Mr. Kelly, I saw your hand up. Where is the pond? Is it on the project that we're talking about no. now? No. <coughs> As I understand it, the, the land goes right up to the pond. And yeah, the Page Street goes to the pond. There's right. the boundary. And there's the pond. Right. right, but it's not on their project. It's right. not their property. It's, it, no. that's the, the, the pond is not on the property on the project. No, Plymouth Woods. No, because right. it's been separated so, out. I can't, I, I can't quite wrap my head around the fact that this is a problem of Mr. Blackie's and not of this current um, engine, oh, well, the current project that we're talking about now. It's like, it's like if, if somebody did something, a neighbor of mine did something to their property that, that, that didn't affect my property at all, then I have no control over, or even if it did, I have no control over what he does. The people can sue him, or I can sue him, but it has really nothing to do with this project, it has nothing to do with the town. And I also think that it might not be a bad idea as to have a second, I'm a great person for second opinion, a second independent opinion of an engineer, uh, a civil engineer, so that, that th these people have a vested interest in it, and obviously the people that live there have a vested interest in it. So I don't know whether we will ever get a, a, a total agreement of, of, ev of everybody. 
you know. And so uh, I think that if we, somebody, I don't care who it is, that would hi hire this independent engineering firm to say yes or no and to settle this matter. Well, as I understand it, I think our, our town engineer is independent and they have their own engineers looking at it as well. I'm not sure how far down that road we can go. I don't um, think there's a need to. I, I, I do agree with the, most of the points that uh, Mr. Kelly has raised here. Um, and first off, um, I would agree with everything, and I have to apologize, sir, I missed your name. Chris Woods. Thank you. Um, I would agree with everything you said, except it's not irrelevant. and it is rebel, and it is important what we try to do with this situation. And uh, most of the discussion, if not all the discussion tonight, is focused on two issues. Um, one has been the appropriate screening and what we do, including fencing, and the other is to deal with the drainage issues. Um, and, and I, for one, would suggest that um, we bring closure on the screening issues tonight in terms of what was the expectation and bringing that back to us. Um, because we have run into complexities and because um, it's very obvious that there are off-site issues that do have implications for what is occurring um, on the abutters to this property. Not the property itself, but the abutters. Um, my suggestion is, because we've gotten in some very technical questions, some technical issues, that we suspend the, uh, the actual um, process in which we're looking at the uh, ninth item on drainage and actually have the town engineer join us at a subsequent hearing. And that will also allow the applicant two more weeks to meet with the other two abutters that you're still in the process of. Um, and to have the town planner to have the time to engage the town engineer with some of the things that have been brought to our attention. Um, it sounds to me that we're going to have to revisit, if we can call it the Blackie project, and look at the commitments and the expectations that were laid out when we approved that back in, I'll take the word here, I can't remember if it was 2005 or six, but back in that time frame. Take a look at those commitments and see if there's anything that's outstanding that was reasonable to anticipate was going to occur um, so that we have a complete picture and to make sure that that's in front of the town engineer. But I'd like to put the rest something tonight and my belief is that the screening that the applicants put in front of us um, is satisfactory. And then we move on signing off on that and just suspend the discussions tonight on the drainage one more time and have our town engineer here to address with us the questions that have, essentially they come down to two things. What can be done off-site that's reasonable to engage Blackies and as a result of the Blackie project and number two to make sure that we do have the technical expertise in the room when we talk about what the implications are with the off-site drainage that's being proposed to help with Page Lane and with the outflow um, we're hearing that it appears that the work that's going to be done on site for the applicant will not improve or increase, I should say, the outflow that's already there in, in the current condition. Um, I'd like to have the town engineer to be able to answer that because I don't feel qualified to be able to deal with that. Well, a lot of ramblings there, Mr. Chairman. Yes, uh, Mr. Okay, we got the letter from the town engineer that said that, you know, number nine, that, that all these items that apply to the approval on this particular project have been met. And I, I guess my question is what, if all of this has been met, what, what are we going to gain by having him here. I mean, I guess what more is he going to say to convince us or not convince us? Since he has, he has met with the, uh, with the engineers and, you know, he's basically saying it, <coughs> they've met all the requirements on this particular project. If there's a problem with, with Blackie and Bico and all that, that should not be affecting right. the approval here. Just a point of clarification, is, is that where the initial 
flooding on the Nelson's property occurred with Blackie with those two uh, front lots? I mean, I'm presuming because I wasn't here at the time. I wasn't either, so. Well, there you go. Mr. Kelly. I believe if you go back to the minutes of the planning board at that time, there was a considerable amount of discussion oh, this, about the paperwork the, <coughs> I know, but that particular uh, part of the project, there was hours of discussion and, and uh, as far as the pond is concerned and Blackie and, and, and the various residents around there as far as that's concerned. But I, I go back to the point of this has really nothing to do with these people here and all we're doing is stonewalling them uh, and costing them money. Now we have a problem with Mr. Blackie and we have a problem maybe with the previous planning board but we don't have a problem with these people so why should we chastise these people for something that is another person's problem? I just guess. I wasn't involved in any of this because I'm very new to the planning board but I think part of the issue may be is we're not sure if this berm by the pond is really a good idea. As Mr. Gazi said, I think it does require me. But, more but that's not this person's problem. Well, but, but it is part of the project. It is tied into it, unfortunately. You it's know, associated. It's, yeah, it's associated with it. So I, I think, I understand what you're saying, but I, I think we do need to be Ms. concerned about it. Mr. Rinlet and Mr. Gazi. Okay. These berms were brought up when we originally approved this with these stipulations. All the berms, uh, I think they went through it, as a matter of fact, I recall almost three times. They've gone back. I mean, at one point it was one way, and the town engineer suggested it be done another way. So that was brought back. If I'm not mistaken, these berms have been discussed three times already. A and the town engineer and the developer and the engineers for the developer have uh, you know come to an agreement that this is the best situation and it has addressed the problem so I mean it, it's been done two or three times Mr. Gosney right I'll pass thank you um, I remember a great deal of discussion about the pond uh, in the berm I voiced my concern about the berm and I know that's water under the bridge I guess we would say okay. I um, we're talking about a pretty condensed area here with homes. Um, there's a lot of families living here. We're talking about a pretty good sized project. In, in I've seen the conditions on Page Street. It's not pretty when we get a lot of rain. And I think rather than just getting a piece of paper from our town engineer, I think it's worth it to the families that live on that street to have him here, as Mr. Gosney uh, has suggested, talk to him and Let's get it from him rather than a piece of paper that where the numbers meet and it, it works out and the equations um, even out. I, I would love, to, I, if not for my own sanity, for, for the people that are, that are here that are worried about water going onto their property. I've seen a lot of other engineering plans where they've kept water on site from runoff. I, I'd like to have him here, but that's my Mr. Ranlett, and then we're going to allow the applicant to speak. I had a I had a question earlier, and I said if Mike is here, I mean we have we have a certified letter from Mike stating that everything is compliant with what the planning board approved, and with these nine stipulations that they've all been taken care of, and what would he do here if he were present to? Um, I mean, if he says it's okay, then what are we going to get by talking to him here in person versus addressing the letter? The, addressing the brother's concerns. <coughs> hmm? Addressing the, the, the brother's concerns, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, uh, addressing a brother concerns, but a lot of what the abutters are addressing, and I think it's come up, is that it's with the Bico situation, right. with the pond, which has no effect on what these people and in, in, in my opinion, and I'll go along with the board, but in my opinion, um, you know, we made the approval. We made the approval based on these things. Uh, Mike is a very good engineer. I don't think Mike has ever, since I've been involved with it and since I've been in the town, I've never seen anything that Mike did 
that did not come to fruition and that was not per se. I'll go along with the board on whatever the board decides. And we're going to let the applicant talk at this point. A few things. I just wanted to, um, I, I think that I, I, Mr. Hearn and Mr. Randall and Mr. Kelly, I think we're all part of the process. This thing went through six, eight months worth of planning board process um, and zoning board as well. And there was, no, I, I didn't hear anything new tonight. Everything that we heard from the neighbors tonight is stuff we've, we did hear as part of that. It was all testimony. I'm sure if you look it up, I believe everything um, is testimony that we did, we did hear at the time. All those things were taken into consideration. Uh, water table issues, um, you know, flow on either side of our property, a lot, of, a lot more discussion about the history, a lot of discussion about the Blackies and the Bico and that their subdivisions. And all that stuff was taken into consideration. You know, we originally proposed a project here and didn't propose any mitigation. We said, look, this is a situation that's off our property. It's upstream of us, it's downstream of us, and it flows through our property. There was a, a plan at one time that I wasn't involved in, that the applicant wasn't involved in, um, to do some type of improvement on Page Street. I saw the plans for those, and I don't think they were feasible. It involved doing some type of outlet structure that would have been at a lower elevation and running a storm drain down Page Street, and then it had no place to go. It had no place to outlet. So they were going to need easements from all the neighbors, and it, w it wasn't feasible, in my opinion. I mean, and Mike McNally had the suggestion to us, well, you have an opportunity with control over this. Now, that there aren't going to be homes over on all on this property, which is what originally was proposed, but we could provide a different, uh, you know, I guess fix for this problem, or at least partial fix for the problem for the people on Page Street. So we went that direction. There were a couple iterations of this, and this all was flushed out, I mean, in my opinion. All, the, all these things were. Now, there is an existing problem out there, and I'm not going to stand here, and I didn't before, and say this is going to fix everything that's out there. Um, it, what it does is it solves part of the problem that's out there. It does what we think we can do as part of this development. Um, perhaps the town should run a storm drain down all the way down Fairgrounds Road and get this water out of there. That'd be great. I'd encourage them to move forward with that. Um, but I think this is a very reasonable, um, s you know, partial solution to this problem to help a lot of the people who are experiencing, you know, flooding problems, and particularly on, on Page Street. Um, you know, the history of this thing, I don't know. I, I think that over time, this, this, my understanding is this pond was an excavated pit as part of the 90, 93 project. So back in the 50s or sometime, it was, I got a little, back then it was probably just gravel bottom and water ripped right through it, you know. And after 50 years, I bet you it's clogged up a little bit. And after a period of time, I bet it reaches the top and now it has no place to go. They didn't, they didn't leave any place for that water to go. If the, if the bico development contributed to it by diverting more water to it, that may be the case. I don't know. Um, I know what happens right now out there, and I know we're trying to solve part of that problem, what we, we think we can do. And this was all part of the planning board process. There was a condition of approval on the plan that said, looks good, get the sign off from the town engineer on his last remaining comments from his May 2010 letter, and that's what we've done, and we have that in hand. And I think, you know, our position is that we would object to any further discussion or reopening of the public hearing um, on that topic. We're here for those two issues tonight. Um, and really that's, you know, that's it. Um, I mean, we're perfectly happy to educate people where we've been, but um, I will say this. I, I'm pretty sure part of my testimony um, back in 2010 was advising you that in addition to Mike McNally reviewing these plans, the state of New Hampshire has to review these plans as part of our alteration of terrain permit, which at that time we hadn't submitted. That plan was, that application was submitted in June. The town does have a uh, copy of it. The town has the opportunity to comment to DES uh, on that application. That would be a very reasonable second set of eyes as a, pro a professional engineer reviewing that uh, at DES. We haven't finalized that permit. We're so we're planning to respond next week to the comments that they did have. I can tell you that they did look at the berm at the end of Page Street. The reviewer that we had at DES even wanted me to go meet with the dam bureau at DES to make sure that there wasn't another level that this thing should go in. And I believe the town was copied on that correspondence. So we met with them. And so there's a lot of different eyes on this thing. And I just encourage you, if there, if there are additional concerns that maybe you express them to DES, and then you'll have 
you know, that second review that you're looking at. Um, but that's, I think that's, we're pretty firm in that position, you know, right now, is that so there's nothing you know, new to be discussed. Mr. Chair, um, this, this is a professional planning opinion. Obviously, there are problems. The Nelsons feel there are problems. As it's been mentioned before, these problems are separate and distinct. They're interrelated, but they're separate and distinct from this project. And professionally and personally, I feel if we can mitigate some of these pre-existing drainage issues now, winter over into spring and then s in a normal winter, which is, God only knows what that is. But then, you know, that will help re-clarify what the Nelson and Mr. Woods, their problems are there. And then you take it to the next level of, of, of recourse. I mean, as Jeff said, you know, storm drains or something. We, it, no one fell swoop is going to fix everybody's everything right now. I mean, whether and I don't know. I mean, you know, how that occurred before is something that will be addressed, but it's certainly not the Plymouth Woods project. I mean, we, we have to be fair here. And, and I'm not saying that, 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 you know, we're just whitewashing it over this. If that's a problem that's down there that's continuing with the Nelsons and Mr. Um, Wood down there, then let's see how this mitigates the rest of the problem for some of the other abutters take that portion out, put it aside, and then look at this again. And it, it's not contingent. This has nothing to do with the approval. I'm just saying that it's apples and oranges to a certain extent. <coughs> and just because, theoretically, if this were approved, or the compliance hearing went ahead with reaffirmation of the approval, doesn't mean that those folks are going to be left in the lurch. It's just an incremental um, process, you know. Their problems are going to have to be looked at too, but it's not part of this process. It just brings it to the forum again. Mr. Gosling. Um, first, uh, an observation, um, thinking after listening to Mr. Um, Renlet. Um, again, as I expressed earlier, my comfort in knowing the uh, quality of the uh, the work that our town engineer does looking on for both the town and for the citizens of this town. Um, one of the things that uh, occasionally occurs is when our engineer is engaging with the applicant, it's on very technical issues and they go back and forth. Mm -hmm. um, what I have also found is that when we do have Mr. Uh, Finale in front of us, the town engineer, that um, when the dialogue needs to occur, with us at the planning board level or with the general public, then he takes these very technical issues and reduces them down to where us lay people can understand what's taking place with all of the design work that they're doing and what it means um, to, to the various uh, parties, whether it's the property owner or somebody sitting on the planning board. Um, and to have that individual in the room to have those kind of discussions so that, yes, I feel very comfortable. He's done all the technical work and he's probably done the right thing on behalf in fact, I'm comfortable we've done the right thing on behalf of the town and the citizens. Um, it's another level of discussion. That having been said, um, I think that there's a, mo a motion that's got two parts that I'd like to put on the table. One is that in the second half of this year, this planning board, at one of its work sessions, will bring this matter back under one of its work sessions to examine the drainage issues that are occurring in this area. And as a part of that review, we'll also revisit the Blackie project to make sure we understand all of the commitments that were made when that project was approved and what the status of those commitments are. And that we will have at our work session the town engineer to advise us on all of the drainage implications occurring out of the Blackie. Um, I do find that all the issues that we, t not all, but the majority of the issues we're talking about tonight are coming from off site. Mm. The other thing that I will now make is an emotion that we find that the applicant is in compliance with the conditions that were placed on him back in May of 2010 and that we move forward with supporting this project as we have had it detailed to us tonight. Do I have a second? Thanks. A second by me? I think, I think John. Okay. I think John Kelly seconded. John Kelly, did you second it? Yeah, I did. Okay. We, we have a, a motion 
uh, on the table to reaffirm the project that they have met all nine of the stipulations that we placed on them from May 20th, 2010, um, that we have a, uh, a town engineer report that, if I can find it in front of me. I oh, probably took she, it from me. Here. She got it. That we have a town engineer report that um, says that they are satisfied with item number nine. Am I taking too much liberty there, Mr. Gosney? No, indeed. Okay. Good. good. Is, what have I missed so far? Is there anything else, or are we good on? I think it's wise to separate those two motions that I put out there, and I think and then, the more important one is the one you have in front of you now. Okay. So let's vote on that, and then move to a second motion after. Mm -hmm. All those in favor of um, approving that motion signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Nay. It, uh, the motion? I abstain. And one abstain. So we've got three yes uh, ayes and one nay and one abs abstain. I'm sorry, I was writing. Who is the nay? Uh, me. You. Okay. Is that enough to carry the motion with? Mm -hmm. The simple majority. So. Okay. Yeah. As long as you have a quorum. Yeah. No majority. Now we have a second item on the table, um, seconded by Mr. Kelly again, that at a, an upcoming workshop, we will have the town engineer um, meet with us to discuss the immediate area around Page Street and, and whether we, if there's a fix that the town would undertake. I think we just undertake the investigation just to see what all of the uh, commitments that were made on the Blackie project. A, re a review, perhaps? Yeah, of that, just so we understand it, because it's it's long since left me. <laughs> and um, and we would then see what the, maybe the potential opportunities are for all of the parties to take a look at that. Mm -hmm. Is there a way that we could notify the abutters for this meeting? Well, I could send them a letter. I mean, it wouldn't be a certified meeting because right. it's a work session for information purposes. Okay. Mr. Renla. Yeah, I, th I think what we would do is, is add a work session, and the town planner is here. She can set it up. We can get the Blackie files. Mm -hmm. Those of us that were not on the planning board at that time can review this information and then... So maybe a one-two? Two sessions, one f to yeah, I think so. get I back think up one, to speed. One for, one for the board yeah, to right. look at the Blackie project and see what was required. Were you familiar right, with it? Get with the town engineer since he's familiar with the sites and everything. What has not been complied with, we can do that. And then we can bring the town engineer, everybody else in, notify all the abutters, and you know we can talk about what has been done, mm -hmm. what hasn't been done, address it with the owners, and then, uh, you know, allow the, the citizen, the abutters, to, uh, to have a say. And have somebody from the town uh, there also, because something needs to be done with it. Mm -hmm. And we all agree on that. So what is going to be the best thing to fix everything? So it's a recommendation for two subsequent work sessions to revisit the issues with the drainage in that vicinity, which ostensibly were caused by the Blackie, or just right. take another look at the Blackie. So we have a motion on the table. Uh, any dis further discussion, Mr. Kelly? I, I just wondered why it has to be a, a work session. Mm. I was thinking the first one would be a work session just because it would be us, but the, the, okay. and then the okay. second meeting would be some sort of hearing with no, the No, meeting. We've got to be real mm -hmm. careful because the technical differences so are huge. If we have a public meeting, public then meeting. we can have During a meeting. public comment. Correct. Yes. Right? yes. So that's correct. That's why okay. we're trying to. Yeah. All right. <coughs> I think we've. Everybody understand the motion on the table? Yep. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Yay. Okay, that motion carries.
We are now moving on to item number five for the evening. I can't even find number uh, five. Correspondence. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to uh, pass this out here. This is, uh, remember when Ms. Bamford came from North Country Council to speak to the uh, Perlac and, and the quarter, the river quarter? She um, has our co your comments and recommendations and stuff here. So I'll just let you pass those. Thank you. And that's just FYI. I mean, we could certainly have a discussion at some point later on it, but uh, I did want to get that to you. And then other business, I just have some paper to hand out. So, okay. Um, but it's interesting to see what her recommendations were and um, the input from the board. Very good. <coughs> Let's move on to item number six, unfinished and other business. Ta-da. <laughs> Okay, now, um, I think early in the spring or late winter, we had, w when the new board members came on um, in April, passed out the zoning books and this and that and everything else, and then subsequent to that, we found out that we had some clerical errors in the zoning, just some pages that need to be... Um, I did. Well, that was my <laughs> question because I've got you guys in the ZBA and we're doing this. No, so anyway, so within the corrections that I passed out before, we found yet another correction. So oh, yeah, it's kind of it, it, it's Dilbert. It's definitely Dilbert. So I don't know what to do. Give you guys the whole sets or just give you the page. Probably the page. Just the page. All right, this is really important. I, I um, about had a heart attack when I saw the error myself. This is page 16 of your zoning. It's not double-sided, but you could slip it in or whatever. It is a minimum frontage. We've corrected it now. I'll just, that's all I want to say is it was pretty, pretty crazy. So if you just want to substitute that page in your zoning books. It was all down here. It was just, you know, it's, it's a lot of data. Was it um, I don't even want to say what it was. It was it was a very strange number. Mm -hmm. so we move to item number seven, public comments. Yes, Mr. Woods. I just want to add a letter. I would very much appreciate a notification list for the public meeting. Do we have an idea when we might have that public meeting? We're looking uh, at. Uh, what is this? July. We have. I was just thinking sometime the second half of the year. Allow the town planner and the engineer the opportunity to root through all the. I mean, there's an awful. I yeah. mean, it's just ponderous. Yeah. How could, how could he somehow? Well, I mean, I think it's we just put a notice of the. Meeting. Well, we we do. I mean, it would be our regular public hearing slash meeting, which is the third Thursday, and there's a schedule downstairs. I mean, it'll it'll be. Um, It'll be on the uh, the public access affected channel. Property owners really, and he would be a major property owner to to be yeah, there. Well, that's technically a yeah, he's definitely impacted by it. Yeah. yeah. Well, so. I'll I'll try to make it. You know, I'll try to make a note, and if you can, um, it's like I said, it's the third Thursday. So just right. you know, but you don't know what third Thursday. No, <laughs> pop in the town hall. I mean, it's, 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 it's at Hannaford's, it's on the public access channel, it's at the library, it's at the transfer station, it's here. Well, why can't we put him on the list of the we, letters? We can. That's what I'm saying. I'll yeah. Yeah, so just keep, 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 keep on the yard. Yeah. Write another take our, famous post-it note. It'll be our building, not his. Yeah, that's a good idea. Thank you, Mr. Woods. All right, very good. Thank you. Frank. Uh, I have a question and a comment. The first comment, uh, going back to some of the elements of Dallas and the public and or others being able to understand what's being presented to the board, uh, you know, what are the disadvantage where as you get a kind of moving map description of what was and what they changed and what they need to, um, and it doesn't get presented this way. It doesn't people, the abutters, and the general public, 
you know, we're kind of like, we're just, we're having to take the words and form a picture. So, so when you have complicated issues and elements of doubts, uh, of issues that you were talking about, and obviously there's a lot of concern on others, uh, people, that's the part I was trying to address before, that, in that um, when, say, the town engineer comes into the meeting, uh, and he says, well, I've looked at it, it's good. Well, that really doesn't help some people form the right picture. They don't get the right response in their minds about uh, questions that they would have in their minds answered. And whereas if you can, as the engineer was doing for your benefit, show what they have done to change from the one previous plan to the new latest previous plan. You know, that's the kind of stuff that needs to be focused out here after they have uh, brought the board up to speed. Uh, when there is, when there is uh, this much concern, conflicts, or elements of doubt on various parties, it appears to me that the words that are being used to describe the solutions and or describe even the problem may not be uh, appropriate or they're not connecting. Another means of uh, visual aid or another... Could we just focus the easel maybe this way? Well, it's, yeah, I mean, this, the, the easel is not just for the board. I mean, that's for public presentation, uh, so, so maybe he... Yeah. So you can always holler if you can't see it. Right. So, uh, well, that's, I think that's what I was hearing, and I'm not a brother, but that's what I was picking up here was a frustration of the fact that they were trying to describe something that they didn't know how to describe. Yeah. You know, they didn't have the technical expertise. And uh, they weren't, in their mind, they weren't being satisfied with the response, even though the good people, well-intentioned, were making the right statements. It did solve their issue. And so uh, I think that might be another uh, element that we consider that uh, you know, we, after, say, the, the procedure is that the um, applicant advises the planning board and then when there's such a, uh, an issue of, say, off-site impacts, that the easel can be uh, yeah. changed so that the public could have an understanding of what the off-site issues were. Because we had the drawings in front of us. Well, they had the drawings, too, because they came in and got them. And I, I mean, I was hoping, I was hoping that perhaps um, Jeff Lewis could speak the, a little more, but but on the other hand of that, this is mitigation that they did on their, of their own volition. I mean, this is, a, as you said, a multifaceted problem, and, and some, which, which helps some of the abutters. Right. But some of the other folks, the Nelsons, um, I mean, apparently had issues, perhaps, from something prior to that this wasn't affecting at all. So it was apples and oranges, and, and it gets emotional, and that's why we're having you know, these other two and, meetings. Uh, two other one was a question, and um, the other kind of mini statement, but uh, I was, I happen to have the Lamson Library, but it is uh, RSA that directs uh, or allows this below selectment uh, the authority to act to um, have a fence or an element that is near a open body of water. And I can't, can't remember the number right now, um, but it's, it's uh, to prevent, obviously, uh, young kids from going in there. So if they need access to the body of water, obviously, there would be a child who can take it. It doesn't have to be for you just have to have the max mechanisms. So I, I'm just saying that, that part of say is there. Or against it. The other question I have is, is this the last month the status of the Lowe's of property? Has that gone by? I'm sorry, Frank, what? The, the Lowe's property, uh, is 
Is this the last month of their approval? approval? No, they got an extension, and I think perhaps you weren't there. It's at least till 2012. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, Mr. Kelly, you had a comment? No, I, I, just a question. Uh, I, I wonder on, on, a, on a project such as what we're discussing tonight, what the responsibility is of the people that are doing the project. In other words, do they have the responsibility to improve off-site uh, situations? Uh, I, would, uh, I would imagine they would have the responsibility if they did something right. to, to damage alarm. that yeah. particular uh, situation, then I could see where they would have to do some mitigation or whatever. But if they, if they come out with a, with a zero uh, change, or if they, even if they improve it, what responsibility they really have to do work off-site to satisfy the abutters? Uh, I think if they bought the land from Bico, and Bico, uh, there was a determination that Bico had to do certain things and they didn't do it, and then sold the land, yeah. I think they're buying the fix at the same time because it was part of a bigger project at, at one point. I, I, I don't think there's enough history, um, and it's not up to the applicant to bring up some of those things. I, I don't know. Well, the, I'm pond, not the pond isn't. The pond isn't an issue to this particular property. It is an issue to the abutters, and and it has long been a problem because you know I mean I've seen it. But I, I I think that we uh, we have uh, have gotten into a problem from a previous planning board, maybe, but I I. My wife said something to me the other day, and I, I, I still remember it, and I did something, and she said, you assumed, you, were, you had an assumption that was going to happen, but you didn't know. And I guess I go back to that as far as the legality of it. None of us are lawyers, I, as far as I know. And the thing is, that when you get... Makes us all good guys, right? <laughs> when you, when you, when you get into that situation, I don't think that we should assume anything. We have legal counsel. Uh, the town of Plymouth uses it um, quite often, and, I d and it's available to us. So I don't think that we should be assuming anything. It's just, the, the, I agree with you. The issue at hand is because now You've taken a parcel of land and subdivided and separated out with two different owners. You have to go back and readdress any or any potential or any perceived or real existing issues from that other owner. And you're right. Although we are, lawyers are expensive, shall we just say that. But I, but I think this work session is very important and it's certainly important for, for this board's clarification because if Bico and Mr. Blackie, um, they decide to proceed, then we will have some of the work done. Um, actually, you know, their, their approval is still in place because they have vested to a certain extent. So well, hopefully the key. Theoretically, they could go forward if they chose. And hopefully the key to, to the solution is not on what we just made the approval on was the only spot that probably could have miti mitigated. Oh. Well, as I, you know, it's, it's kind of, unfortunately, not unfortunately, what it is, is it's first come, first serve. These folks decided to go forward, and that's just the way the world works. I mean, you, you can't cover, you can't anticipate everything all the time. That's utopia, and we certainly don't have that. Is Black have a subdivision to prove? Is that what you mean? It was, yeah. yeah. Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes. Uh, just, i give you an example of this exact thing. I, uh, ended up going to court because the planning board back in the 80s granted a Federal Highlands Development Corporation with 155 units up. And their drainage plan, the whole drainage system, uh, had a high level of low land. So oh. guess where the water was going? And uh, it was no way, it was a one inch, 12, 12 inch, one foot tall, but it was no way they were going to drain 20 some acres. And 
that one color. All right, so I took it to court uh, and won the judgment. And uh, so they, I think what we get confused and through that whole process of, again, it's good people have attention on the board, the board members get confused between the technology of mitigation that the engineers have the capability of acting on or acting with, and then the authority to act uh, on the abutter. The selectmen and planning boards don't have any authority to act to uh, tell an abutter they must accept or reject a damage or a flowage or something happening on their property. It's only to the abutters that they have the authority to act on. So that's where the confusion came, where they were talking about putting in big culverts and doing all sorts of things. And if they could mitigate that issue within their bounds, on their property, then there was no problem, obviously. But obviously, because of the, the way the lay of the land, it was just physically not possible for them to do that. They had to flow it online. Um, and, then, and of course, in that case, the whole thing was the state had a program about four months before they applied to come in and put all new culverts in. And I was working with the state to put the culverts in, and they declined. They didn't want any part of it. So they shot themselves in the foot. But my education on the system through the courts was that you have engineering mitigation technology and you need to keep that separate from the legal authority to act of the owner and the board. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Just Johnson. One more follow-up observation to a um, point that uh, John spoke to. Um, any applicant that comes in front of us we have a responsibility to make sure that we understand any impacts that the development of that property may have in two ways. Number one, of course, is the immediate abutters. But then number two is the town in a general nature. And that's why there is this subject of looking what you might characterize as, as off-site in the one that we're all familiar with was traffic flow, where we look at a potential impact on a highway that um, perhaps is as much as a quarter or half a mile or three quarters of a mile away because we require the applicant to actually mitigate any negative impacts that occur within the town. In this particular case, I was impressed with the fact that this site development, especially with the sign off of where I strongly agree with you, I hope you picked up on that even though I mm -hmm. didn't come across that way. Mm -hmm. um, the town engineer is saying that in terms of drainage, the abutters were not going to be impacted as a result of the development of this site. Right. Mm -hmm. And I could not hear anything in the dialogue that occurred tonight, even though it was limited in scope, that said that there was any negative impacts anywhere else off site as a result of this. Um, while we are very sympathetic sometimes with other issues that occur off site, there's no reason to hold the applicant hostage to that particular subject especially in line um, with the fact that they've done volunteer efforts mm -hmm. to gain our good graces. That's the way the game is, is I hate played. to say played, but it is. <laughs> the way the game is played. Proceeds. That <laughs> you put forth good measures right. that go ab above and beyond okay, because okay. you do want to garner the support right. of the planning sure. board and recognize sure. that, and by the way, this project coming to Plymouth is going to be a good one. This is going to help the town, not only because of the tax base, but because it is workforce housing that's going to show up. And that's something we need in this town. So when you look at the work this planning board's done in just the last two months, with the elderly project and then this one, um, especially when it's being developed in a way that, that's compliant with what we've done with zoning along Fairgrounds Road, it's good stuff. So the, the movement forward with this project as a whole, was in the best interest of the entire town. Exactly. And I think that the other efforts that we went through to to uh, set up a subsequent hearing to look at the drainage issues does fall within our responsibilities. It does. It's long-range planning. Uh, it, it it was tough to it had to be a way to segregate those two and yet still address the issues. Exactly. And that was the other thing. I was looking for another vehicle, John. To, allow the people that live out there to be able to work through what maybe we could do. But I didn't think it was appropriate to hold the hostages, no. No, this particular thing. 
And I think it, <coughs> it was good that we, I think we showed the people that had still had a concern that we're concerned about it and we're just not going to let it go. That it's right. going to be addressed. We're going to look at it. Yeah, well, I'm an electrical engineer, so I don't know a whole lot about water flows. I want to see Mike in the room when we start talking about it. Oh, exactly, exactly. <laughs> and I think we should bring Mike in when we when we have this conversation. And uh, but I, I I don't feel that is the responsibility of the planning board to correct a situation that might have been occurred when they were doing 93, because 93 and today is a long, long time in, in the process. And, and I think that, like all of us, if we feel as though we can correct a situation without ourselves paying for it, and we can convince somebody else to pay for it, then I, I, I have a feeling that that might have been part of the undertone of some of the the uh, discussion that, is, that went on with the abutters tonight, because that problem has been right. there for a long, long time. And what they want to do is get this guy to pay for improvements that should have been done either by Blackie or by whoever dug the damn pit or whatever it is and, and, and it isn't fair to, to slam this, these people and, and make them cost a lot of money for a problem they didn't create. Exactly. All mm -hmm. right. Had a good discussion on this. It will, it will continue and uh, I would love to hear a motion, a different one. So we'll do it, Jane. Alrighty then. Yeah, my head hurts too. <laughs> 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 my time. <laughs>